Thank you very much. Uh, my name is uh, uh, Takamichi Nakamoto. My talk is uh, so machine olfaction technology, and so which includes uh, so uh, all the sensing system and olfactory display. So this is a sensors conference. So uh, we talk uh, about uh, the sensing system, but so another part is an olfactory display. This is also a machine olfaction. But so uh, this is uh, a technique to present smells, and so. Uh, this is the uh, content of my talk, and so first, uh, so uh, the olfactory mechanism, olfactory mechanism, and so also that uh, method to measure odors. Uh, so there are different conventional techniques. So I would like to describe that. And so next one is the odor sensing system, so uh, which you are often called the electric nodes. And so uh, this topic is and so. Uh, related to that machine learning, so deep learning technology uh, to estimate uh, all the impression. And so, uh, and so this is uh, related to the sensors. And so, uh, this topic is our factory display. Uh, maybe the, so this topic is not common in the sensor community. So, I'd like to describe this one. And so, uh, this topic is exploration of a set of border components. That one is essential in realizing the olfactory display. So later, I, I'd like to describe uh, about it. And finally, there's perspectives. Uh, that one is called. And so first, uh, I introduce that so structure of olfactory epithelium. Olfactory epithelium is a sensing uh, domain. And so this is the structure of that. And so this part is an olfactory sensory neuron, often called OSN. And so from OSN, so so some kind of so long hairs, we call this one is a cilia. Uh, that one is extended from that OSN. And so this is an so viscous liquid layer. We call that so mucus layer. And so uh, actually, that's when that so so inhale that smell, and uh, odorant molecule comes around here, and so dissolving mu mucus layer and going to that cilia. Uh, in the cilia, uh, here is a this is a olfactory receptors, and so olfactory receptor captures odorant molecules, and so after that, so. This signal is converted into that electrical signal and uh, a pulse signal uh, going to that olfactory valve. This is a, a front end stage of the olfactory sensory information processing. And so after that, going to that, so finally going to that uh, the brain. And so this is a structure of olfactory receptors. And so olfactory receptor is typically on the uh, cell membrane. So this is a uh, active cell membrane here. And so cell membrane is composed of lipid membrane, lipid and protein. And so lipid portion, so uh, typically the lipid bilayers. This is a hydrophilic portion. This is a hydrophobic portion and bilayer structures. And this portion is a protein. And in this case, a uh, uh, protein is an uh, um, olfactory receptor. And so uh, uh, actually, that protein is a sequence of amino acids. And so, uh, so actually, there's so uh, seven alpha helical regions. Uh, this, is a, uh, this is in the protein. And seven means one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and uh, seven alpha helical regions. So this cylinder is an actually so the structure of kind of coil, and so uh, amino acid uh, uh, is connected in sequence, uh, and so this one is here and here, and so actually the seven uh, alpha helix structures appears on the proteins you know, of in the olfactory receptors. And so this is a feature of that. And so this is a principle of, uh, uh, basic principle of order recognition. And so uh, 
this is uh, so olfactory receptors. Actually, there's one, two, three, receptor one, receptor three, two, and receptor three. And so this one can recognize the so, uh, shape of the molecules, uh, but so not completely, but partially. Uh, for example, receptor one um, recognize this shape, uh, 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 half of the cycle, circle, and so receptor two recognize this rectangular shape, uh, receptor three recognize this triangle shape. So uh, receptor one can recognize uh, this odorant B and this odorant C. So this one respond to that. Uh, receptor one respond to odorant B and odorant C. Receptor two uh, uh, actually respond to that odorant A and odorant C. And receptor three re responds to that odorant A and odorant B. So each receptor uh, respond to the multiple of molecules, odorant molecules. However, that when you see uh, these three uh, receptors response together, you can recognize that odorant A, odorant B, and odorant C. So um, uh, this is not a specific response. So um, yeah, pattern recognition technique is actually necessary in that olfactory uh, sensing. And so this is the evaluation method of odors. So uh, this is a sensory test. And so sensory test means that humans sniff the smell. And so this is a, a paper stripe here. And the first paper stripe is immersed in this uh, fragrance liquid and uh, so pulling up. And after that, so remove that, resume uh, the solvent, uh, typically the ethanol. And so that after that, so sniffing the smell. This is a fragrance laboratory. And so often there's this kind of test. Daily life, uh, they do that. And so this is, so in our case, we do that cam at campus festival. Uh, here, the uh, sensory test is performed at campus festival. This is a corridor at the room, and so we, we can do that. So people sniffing the smell in here. And so this is a physical method to do that sensory test. And so this is a sampling bag, a sampling bag. Uh, and so smell is actually packed into that bag. And people are sniffing that, and so and so after that, so evaluate that. So the uh, evaluation method is uh, several evaluation. There are several evaluation methods, but so physically, that this is a very simple way to do that. And so another method is that so this is an olfact meter. Ah, sorry, olfact meter is a, a little bit so expensive machine, and so this is a, so a bottle order bottle is here. And so this is a flow meter is here. And so uh, each order bottle of the flow is controlled by that so valve. And so uh, after that, so mix that. And so this is a mouthpiece. And the, here is a subject. So smell is found into the subject. So this one can control the so, uh, sniffing the condition precisely. But so uh, system is a little bit bigger. And so it takes much time to do that. And so this one is analytical technique. And so most famous one is gas chromatograph. And so typically that, so a sample is in the liquid phase. That one is put into that here, into that uh, injection port. And so here is a caram. And caram is typically, uh, its temperature is raised up to uh, around 200 degrees centigrade. And so uh, inside the karam, so some uh, stationary phase is, co is coded. So, and, and so this one coding is performed inside the karam. And so when the, so, uh, the vapor is into, introduced here, and so interaction between the vapor and the stationary phase is large. At that time, that it takes much time to go through this current. And so retention time at that time becomes uh, longer. But the interaction between the vapors and the, and the stationary phase, that one is uh, small. At that time, so rapidly uh, response appears here. So retention time here is very small. So uh, when uh, people do that, 
gas analysis. So uh, typically measure this detention time and uh, do the gas analysis qualitatively also quantitatively. And so this is a, a very famous conventional technique. And so now moving to that sensing system. And so this is a typical order sensing system, often called as electric nose. And so uh, here is an array of the sensors, in this case, close presence gas sensors. And so, but uh, the type of the sensing film is different. And sample, in this case, is a, so a kind of fruit or a, uh, beverage or perfume, so those things. And so, uh, it's, uh, example of sensor here is a closed uh, crystal microbalance gas sensors. And so, sensor response is, uh, uh, this is sensor A, sensor B, and C. And so, this type of that, so, um, sensor response pattern is obtained. And after that, so that one put into that pattern recognition portion. That, so this one typically that, so uh, neural network, machine learning, or multivariate analysis, or something like that. The after that, uh, uh, typically that main problem is the class classification, and classification result coming at the, that here. And so uh, basic principle is that, response of multiple sensors with partially overlapping specificities are recognized using pattern recognition technique. This is same as, same as, so this one. And so this is a biological one, but so, uh, uh, biological one also uses that, this kind of technique. And so this one is, uh, what are kind of sensors used in the machine operation? So actually that in the morning talk, so um, already appears several types of sensors. And here, so summarize that from the viewpoint of the total sensing system. So uh, here this one is closed crystal microbalance gas sensor. This, this one is very famous for detecting the, the mass change. And so the output shape type is the frequency shift. Uh, SAW, this is a surface acoustic wave gas sensor. So that one also that typically so uh, making that so SAW oscillator. And so frequency shift is its output. And so third one, cantilever gas sensor. So this one also that frequency shift. And so these, uh, first these three are typically used on uh, the acoustic wave uh, devices. And so metal oxide gas sensor, this one is most uh, typically used in this field. So this one is a resistance change, and so that one is converted to that uh, voltage change after that. And also that conducting polymers, so this one also that resistance change. And so more safety gas sensor, this one is metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor gas sensor. And so this one is typically that stress voltage change of the gate. And so uh, optical gas sensors. Uh, optical gas sensor uh, typically that fluorescence absorption and sometimes uh, surface plasma resonance are those phenomenon you use. And the electrochemical gas sensors uh, typically that current change. So this is amperometric type sensors. And the gas chromatograph this is typically that analytical tool, analytical tool, but so uh, fast gas gram, gas gram, the fast GC sometimes used as a sensors. So in this case, uh, retention time is its output. At mass, spe mass spectrometry, uh, so mass spectrometry without GC can be used uh, as a, like a sensors um, in real time. So uh, I added so mass spectrometry here. The final one is the olfactory receptor-based sensors. So re this one is a, a recently a, a little bit hot topic. And so this one, so uh, what kind of sensor output? It depends on the so transducers, uh, but so fluorescence, mass change, voltage change, both those things uh, typically use that. And so this is, uh, so closed crystal microbalance gas sensors. And so structure is very simple. Uh, this is a quartz plate, and both sides, uh, this is an electrode. In this case here, the silver electrode, but so gold electrode often used, and so that one is connected to that oscillator. 
And so sensing film, that one is coated on the surface of that electrode, and so it works as sensors. And so, so due to the mass loading effect, so when the so odorant molecules are absorbed on the surface of the sensing film, and it's so frequency changes, and the output is the frequency shift. And so typical uh, coarse crystal micro microbial gas sensor, this is a so very typical one, and this is a top view. But so this is an SMD type. SMD means surface mount device type uh, resonator. This is small one. And this is SMD type, but so also including that oscillator chip uh, just behind the uh, coarse plate. So these are coarse resonator gas sensors. And so this one is a principle of optical, uh, uh, optic, optical uh, olfactory receptor based sensors. And so in this case, so we utilize a fluorescence measurement. And so this is uh, some the main, uh, cells. And so in this case, uh, so um, insect, of, insect, insect olfactory receptor is embedded into the cell. This is a portion of that olfactory receptors. And this is a repeat bilayer. So this one is explained in previously. And so repeat bilayer is so surrounded with a cell and olfactory receptors here is embedded into that. And so uh, this olfactory receptor is a gyrosophere's olfactory receptor expressing on the membrane. This is another so, uh, cell, SF21 cells. And so this one uh, can be captured order molecules. After that, so open the ion channel. And so calcium ion, that one flow into that here. And this is a protein already, so uh, transfection uh, technique is used to put into that uh, protein. And the name is GCAMP3. And so this is a pro protein sensitive to that calcium ion. And so uh, this one has a fluorescence uh, molecules and when the excitation light comes here and so you know, fluorescence light also going out and so when the odorant uh, molecules captured here uh, calcium ion concentration increases and then uh, fluorescence increase and so fluorescence cha intensity change is the output of these sensors and so this, these are uh, uh, the brief explanation of sensors and so uh, this one is an anal uh, analysis technique. So most famous one is a principal component analysis. And um, this is a variable one, this is variable two. So typically that this is one sensor output, this is another sensor output. And so in actual case, this is uh, so, uh, more than 10. And so hyperspace of the uh, sensors, that one uh, should be analyzed. But in this case, for simplicity, just two sensors here and here. And when the uh, data distribution of sensor uh, is uh, like this, this one, and so, uh, and so principal component, component analysis extracts uh, the principal axis. The first principal axis is here, and second principal axis is here. Uh, Princess axis are taken in sequence in hyperplane so that variance can be maximized. In, the case, in this case, the data variance uh, of this direction is uh, largest. So this is the direction of principal component one. Then this is the second uh, principal com uh, component number two. And so uh, we can take, uh, so mm, this, uh, in this way uh, to take the so principal component. And so we can compress the data uh, into the uh, small dimensions using principal component analysis and visualize the data easily. And so another technique of the, so another technique is, uh, so this is discrimination analysis. And discrimination analysis is used, used to classify the data. And so this is the example there. So this is S0 is one of the sensor response. S1 is one, another sensor response. So two dimensional data, I can explain that. And so uh, this is the uh, data of the sample group A. This is the data of the sample group B. So the data is distributed, distributed inside this one and also the 
group D D data distributed here. And when we take the principal component axis this way, and so uh, the scores of group A and score of, of group B, that one two overlapping. So uh, principal component analysis cannot discriminate uh, these two samples. However, that when you take the so the axis this way, uh, we can easily discriminate that group A around here and group B around here. And so in this uh, discrimination analysis, so uh, we use the information of each data, uh, each, uh, the category with each, each data. And after that, so we can make a discriminant functions and so we can dis use, do that discrimination analysis. And so recently uh, it becomes very popular uh, that that one is the support vector machine. The support vector machine, so that one uh, is so important concept is that margin. And so this is the data group one. This is a data group two. And so uh, you can have so many choice to dis classify these two. For example, uh, discrimination uh, so line is boundary is here or well, discrimination line is here is also okay. However, the, so uh, in this analysis, so margin uh, to, uh, to classify these two sample, uh, that one should be maximized. And so uh, in this case, uh, so actually the, so the, the, the closest point and distance between the closest point and this line and the closest point out. Uh, the closest point to this line, so that one should be maximized. So this is the support vector machine concept. And so we use this uh, so pattern matching technique to that machine of action. And so this is a brief introduction and so, and so then, so deep learning technology uh, is used to estimate all the impressions. Actually, that so deep deep learning is uh, so uh, much layer uh, much layer perceptron. So that one is often used in the electric noise field. And so, and uh, so first I'd like to describe the problem. This is an um, so order character variation form. And so, uh, for example, fragrant, sweaty, uh, almond like. And so scores from zero to five. So uh, this one uh, the evaluation form in the sensory test. And so all the impression is expressed by the scores of descriptors in this case. And so this is evaluation by the semantic differential method. And so descriptor here is actually the four four hundred four one hundred forty four descriptor. And so Actually, we use the data. So data is a sensory test uh, performed by Doronix in 1985. And so this one is a mass spectrum data. And so this one, so mass spectrum, uh, this one master charge ratio, this is a detector output. And so mapping of mass spectrum data uh, onto that order impression scores, uh, that one, uh, we, we like to perform that. And so mapping function can be formed by deep learning technique. And so this one is a counterpart technique, conventional technique, and so PRS. Uh, PRS is a, a partial least squares method. And so uh, this one so is known as uh, bet performance better than multiple linear regression. And so, uh, Briefly explain that so principle of PRS, and so this is an independent variable space, and this is a dependent variable space, and so regression is performed from independent variable space to dependent variable space. Uh, but so in case of PRS, and first that independent variable space, some features in this case say so uh, T, that one is extracted is in the independent variable space. Uh, also, in the same manner, so dependent variable space, some features also picked up. So say, in this case, U. So these T and U are called uh, latent variables. 
And so this is a latent variable space. Uh, this is u and this and t. And in this case, uh, some kind of regression analysis that we use. Uh, latent variables are used for uh, dimensional reduction, uh, both in, in the independent variable space and the dependent variable space. And so these two, uh, actually that, uh, so regression function is obtained in the latent variable space. And after that, so we produce to that dependent variable space. And so in, this is called that uh, PLS method. And so this is a kind of gold standard of the regression analysis, especially in the chemometric field. And so here, this, uh, so now we want to use that, so deep learning technique. And so uh, this is the structure of autoencoder. And so autoencoder, what, what is it? And so this, uh, this is a, a multi-layer perceptron structures. And so this is the input vectors. Input layer is here. This is the output layer is here. And so number of uh, neuron in the input layer and the number of neuron, neuron in the output layer, those two are same. And so when the so target input for neurons in the output layer, so I mean the so the, the supervised data, so that one is the same as input vectors here. Uh, at that time. Um this is actually the supervised training, but so uh, actually, so so this one can work unsupervised training, and so feature can be extracted here. So this one uh, is a, a intermediate layer in the hidden layer, and so this one the number of neuron actually is so small in this case. And so future vectors uh, can be uh, compressed in these layers. So um, data compression, that one is possible using this one. And so we call this an autoencoder. And so B0, B1, B2, B3, these, these are the bias, bias vectors. And so, so in this case, so we use two autoencoders. And the first encoder is here. And so this one, to do that extraction of a mass spectrum data. And so a feature vector appears here in the middle part. And so this, this one is an autoencoder for sensory space. And so uh, also that the middle layer uh, feature vector appears here. And so uh, uh, this is much layer perceptron is here. And this material perception is used from the mapping from the future vector of mass spectrum onto that future vector of sensory data. So um, the first uh, two autoencoders extract the future vectors and uh, mass spectrum data and sensory data. And the future vector, vector of mass spectrum is mapped onto the sensory data using multilayer perception. So this this one works uh, similar to this PLS, but so uh, this one is a linear technique, but so this technique is non-linear. And so this one is actual uh, diagram of that model. And so this one is also uh, the autoencoder for mass spectrometer. And actually the dimension of the mass spectrometer 212 in this case. And five layer structure is used here. And so this is a, a autoencoder for sensory data. And so discrete number of discrete are 144. And so five layer structure is used to extract that so features. And so uh, middle match layer perceptron is here. And so one, two, three, four, five structure is used here. And this portion here is the so first three layer of the so autoencoder in the mass, mass spectrometer. And this three is the three latter layer of the autoencoder for sensory data. And totally that nine layer is used for to extract, uh, to predict the uh, impression of smell. And so intermediate number of neurons in the intermediate layer here, uh, this one is uh, 48. And so this sensory data 
this this is a study. So uh, and this is a number of neuron in each layer. And so again, so this is a principal component analysis. And so uh, this one is also used as a data compression. And so we extract uh, compare the autoencoder and the principal component analysis. And so this is a sensory data. And uh, this is a sensory data. This is a mass spectrum data. And this, this is a feature dimension. This is a so reconstruction data is here. And so uh, when the so dimension becomes larger, so uh, PCA, this is a principal component analysis, this is an autoencoder, so the error becomes similar. However, the, so, uh, the, in, for the numbers of small dimensions, so uh, autoencoder, so this one uh, has high performance. This is a sensory data, this is a mass spectrum data. And so reproduction error of autoencoder is smaller than that of principal component analysis when dimension of feature vector is small. And so this is an accuracy of all the impression estimation using cross validation method. And so cross validation, this is typically used in the pattern recognition program. And so this one is estimation result by nine layer uh, so models. That one means that so deep learning. This one is estimation result by partial risk squared method. And so in this case, number of latent value is 45. And this one is optimized. And so um, you know, this one is a true value, and this is a predictive value. And so this is a diagonal axis. And when the data is on the diagonal axis, uh, so accuracy is very good. And when you see these two graphs, especially that along this, uh, along along this one, so uh, so uh, estimation accuracy becomes better. And so this uh, coefficient of correlation here, 0.76, and this one 0.61. And so estimation accuracy of 9 layer MLP was better than that of conventional PLS method. And so this one is a comparison. So uh, this MLP is much layer persistent. That one is trained using back propagation method. And so that one is uh, uh, so also that so conventional back propagation method available. So we uh, compare the performance. In this case, that's for simplicity, that's so. Uh, autoencoder, three layer autoencoder, and so uh, three three layer uh, uh, MLP in the middle part is used, and so also that. So after that, so uh, we constructed as one, two, three, four, five layer uh, neural network, and so uh, the first first method is that uh, training the neural network using conventional back propagation algorithm. Second method is that uh, all training this three layer for mass spectrum data, all, all encoder uh, for sensory uh, sensory data, and after that, so mapping from mass spectrum data to the sensory data is performed here. And so this is the result. And so uh, this is uh, so the same. So this is a true variant, the predicted value is here, and this is a partially squared method. This is uh, so five layer. Typical neural network here. This is a proposed uh, proposed uh, proposed method. So using autoencoder, and you so uh, you, you can see that. So this is a so coefficient of correlation, and so uh, so proposed method. So coefficient coefficient is the best one. So estimation accuracy was improved compared with PLS as ordinary back propagation learning. And so this one is the same, but so this one just shows the error. And this is a PLS, this is a five layer typical neural network, and this one five layer neural network, including auto encoder. And so, error accuracy, this one's accuracy is the best one. And so, then move to that opacity display portion. And so, uh, opacity display, so as I told you previously, that so this one is uh, so uh, the device to present a smell. And so, uh, recently, several research, research groups in virtual reality uh, proposed uh, devices to present a smell. And so, spot sent by air cannon. This one uh, shoots the air toward the target person, and so only that person can sniff the smell. And so, wearable factory display 
and this is smell diffusers. Those are proposed that. And so, uh, in our case, we focus on olfactory display to present variety of smell by blending multiple odor components at any recipe. And this is a specification of that olfactory display. And so, for example, so number of smells. That one means that how many smells actually uh, we can present that. So, second one is the adjustment of concentration. And so, from lower concentration to higher concentration, so I mean the dynamic range of order intensity. And so, third one is uh, so uh, order can uh, change. Is it possible to change the orders? And so, if possible, so what is the speed of uh, order variation, both in quality and intensity? And so, first one is that uh, feeling of direction to the object with smell. And so, this is if the feeling of direction is possible, uh, localization of smell source in the virtual space, that one is possible. And the fifth one is the uh, uh, area of smell to be diffused. And so, this is for personal use, or this is for many persons, or uh, that one is a final one. So, first, uh, determine this kind of specification. Mm, so it, it is necessary. And so, uh, so as I told you, so and this is a, so uh, olfactory display uh, to blend multiple other components. So, uh, so one of method is that to use a, use a mass flow controller. MFC is the mass flow controller, and so several components are prepared, and so those components uh, mix together, and so. MFC adjusts the uh, uh, flow rate. And so, for example, this component, so 10 milliliter per minute, this component, 90 milliliter per minute. So, uh, this relative concentration of component vapor 1 is 10%. Relative concentration of component vapor 2 is 90%, all those things. And so, uh, mass flow control, mass flow controller can precisely control the flow rate. And so this is uh, so the big photo of the mass flow controller. And another method is that uh, inkjet devices. And so inkjet devices used to, it can be used to produce a sm smell. And so tiny amount of liquid do droplet, that one is dropped into that mesh heater. And so uh, this drop droplet is generated by inkjet device. And after that, so uh, heat is a mesh. And you can uh, you can sniff the smell. This is a photo of the inkjet devices for that, and this is a photo of the mesh heater. And so, if you combine the, so several inkjet devices, uh, or the blender uh, is realized using multiple inject devices. And this is uh, so aut automatic sampler, so typically used for liquid chromatography. Uh, however, that so you, if you want to uh, mix uh, many components. Uh, you can utilize uh, automatic samplers. Uh, so many samples actually that can be blended. A few tens of components so that are easily mixed in the liquid phase. However, the problem is that so uh, this is not in real time. So uh, you can do that, but so this is not in real time. And so this one is an olfactory display using solenoid valve. And so uh, it is composed of several solenoid valves. So this is a solenoid valve here. And so uh, that one is controlled by algorithm. In this case, a uh, delta sigma modulation. And so uh, actually, the solenoid valve is a kind of switch. And so vapor and air can be switched, but so this one can be rapidly switched. And solenoid valve with high speed switching is performed here. And so frequency of this, uh, the the vapors uh, that one actually that uh, conveys uh, the analog information. And so after that, so this is the low pass filter, but so this is actually the fluidic low pass filters. And so component vapor with a specified concentration can appear here. And the fluidic analog signal can be expressed by the solenoid bulb with high speed switching. And this one is an example of that. So in this case, a uh, sample is a two hectanom, and so generated by olfactory display. And this is the time, and this is a relative. Uh, this one is also, uh, in this case, actually the QCM sensor response. And so, 
And this one is specified concentration, 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%. And according, according to that specified concentration, so uh, concentration changes here. And so uh, there is no switching noise of the solenoid bulb appears on the output. And so this is actually the photo of that opacity display. And so this is a opacity display, and this is a control roller, and so this is a air pump. And so this is another one. And so um, this one is a miniaturized pump. A pump is here. This is a liquid pump. And so this is a surface acoustic wave device. This is actually not sensors, but an actuator. And so uh, when this tiny liquid droplet is put on here, and so uh, SAW device actually that atomizes the droplet, and so uh, people can sniff the smell. And small fan, uh, so blow the wind, and so people can sniff that. So this is a photo. Uh, this is a SAW device. This is an electrodynamic pump here. And so this is sensors, so this is a fan, and so uh, even the low volatile flavors can be presented uh, rapidly without residual order. And so this is uh, so explanation of SFW streaming. And so uh, atomization is utilized the phenomenon uh, the acoustic streaming. And here is the interdigital transducers and the surface acoustic will travel along the surface. And this is a liquid droplet. And so that uh, in the re here, so uh, surface acoustic wave is ready into the li liquid droplet, and so this is a longitudinal wave. After that, converted to the capillary wave, and atomization occurs when the SAW energy is rise. And so, uh, this one is uh, so result, and so this is a sensor response, and this is uh, so sample is a two hexanon, so this is with moderate volatility, and this is a sample beta ion, this is with low volatility volatility, and so uh, this one typically have the problem of smell persistence. Uh, but so uh, when we do this device, and so sensor response occurs rapidly here, this is a two hexanon case, this is beta ion case, almost similar sensor response. So uh, uh, presentation speed of low volatile compounds is almost same as that of the moderate volatile compounds. And so this one is uh, in comparison. And so this one, the solenoid type uh, uh, olfactory display we use. And so sample is beta unit in this case. And so more than 10 minutes, uh, still sensor response going up. And so uh, it takes much time when the conventional olfactory display is used. And so this is a recent uh, achievement. And so wearable olfactory display. And so this one used together with that virtual reality headset. And this is a head mount display here. And so uh, people enjoy the uh, uh, virtual environment. And so uh, together with that, so this is uh, so, uh, the wearable olfactory display. And this one emits a smell to the uh, person's nose. And so uh, this is a kind of game here. And so this is in, in this one is in the uh, virtual environment, and uh, here you can see that this is a so far away, but this is a cocktail bar, and so this is the orange, and so another place so there is another uh, flavor classes, and when you go through this, so you have a light to sniff the orange, and go through the another one, so have a light to go to the classes. This is a kind of maze. And after go get through the maze, here is a cocktail bar, and you can sniff at, at that place. You can sniff that both uh, orange and cassis. And so this is the contents of the virtual reality. And so this is a game, and a cooking game. And so uh, using can put food materials such as butter, meat, onion, garlic, wine, curry, roux, rice. And so that one into the pan in sequence and in a virtual environment. Uh, after each operation, user can enjoy the smell synchronously with animation. Uh, user can put, uh, so this one, so uh, in this case, a mysterious experience you can actually have. And so this is a photo of that. And so this is a uh, screen. And so this is a pan. And so, so first put the uh, so butters. And so this is garlic. This is uh, onions, carrot, and beef, uh, water, wine, 
and so curry roux and spice. And so finally, the when go go to here, so you can complete the curry uh, cooking. And so this is a cooking game with the scent. And so uh, we demonstrated this game in many places actually. And so uh, this one is an interactive uh, art with sun and scent. And so uh, we call this virtual ice cream shop. And so uh, like a, a 31 Baskin Robbins ice cream shop. So in this case, so mixed flavors ice cream, you can enjoy that, but that one is not real, but virtual one. And so this is the menu of the butter ice cream shop. And so this one, the olfactory display application, the appropriate smell enhances the impression of the corresponding scene. And the contrast of different smell enhances the positive impression. And the olfactory display provides a new method of uh, a kind of artistic, artistic impression. And so this is the so final one, that's the expression of the, or the order component. And so the problem is that so variety of smell can be presented by blending multiple other components. However, we do not um, a set of other components to realize uh, any orders. And so sensory test uh, might be the best way to reveal an appropriate set of other components. However, that uh, it is not practical to collect a sufficient number of data because of the uh, huge task. And so in this case, a mass spectrum database is used to extract that order component. And so advantage of mass spectrum in this case is that a huge amount of data or more than 100,000 components are available. This one is in the database and obtain the data stable. And so without influence of environments such as temperature and humidity, so chemical cells are often affected, is affected by this one. And method of future extraction we use that. So uh, any element in the recipe should be non-negative, any element in the MS pattern it should be non-negative. So we use that NMF, that means non-negative matrix factorization. That technique is used. And so this is the example of mass spectrum. And so this is a embodied mass to charge ratio. This is the detector output. Molecular ion peak is here. And so many fra fragment ion peak appears here. And so this can be used as, um, as mass spectrum. And so this one is also data matrix is here. This one can be decomposed into that basis matrix and coefficient matrix. And from the basis matrix, we can extract that uh, basis picture. And so this is a sequence. Uh, so first we use the NMF and so basis vector extraction. And so recipe of that uh, basis vector that one determined and set of all the components prepared from one to large N. And so we can make variety of smells here. And so this one is an 158, so essential oil used in this study. All the uh, mass spectral measured in advance. And so this one is a result of that uh, approximation of the mass spectrum. This is the organic current, this is the peppermint. And so uh, 12 other components and 30 other components are used to approximate that. And so in case of 12 other comp components, sometimes so deviation occurs here. But so 30 other components, so uh, approximation is very good. And this is a result of that so, uh, so sensory test. And so this is the original order. We use orange, peppermint, and black papers. And so uh, so uh, task for the subject is the classification of these three samples. And the original order, so almost completely they can do that. But so in case of 12 other components or so mixtures, and so sometimes confusing between the peppermint and black paper occurs. But in case of the 30 other components, and so almost 90% classification rate we can obtain, and approximation using 30 other components is sufficient to pair with, it is not good for 12 other components. And so this one is a so sensory um, triangle test between the so discriminate, uh, discriminate original flavor from that approximated flavor. In case of 12 other components, so approximation is actually not so good, but 30 other components, approximation is much, much better than 12 other components. And uh, so this is that other component section. And so this is a perspective, and so this is actually that article for high school student. And so in the future, so uh, this is a barbecue is performed here, and so and when, so this is a mobile phone, and so sniff the smell, and so after that, so this is remote site, 
this is now delicious people say that this is an online game and so sniffing coming from the game and so uh, this is an online game and this is uh, so online shopping and so uh, people can sniff the smell and so uh, purchase the uh, fragrances and so this is a recent uh, book or machine or functional test and so uh, in detail so those were put into the tier and you can see that and so this is uh, so our lab members and so uh, our lab members are by this uh, research and thank you very much for kind attention.